Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm back with the same Bronco. I wanted to do a follow-up video for you guys, going over some things that I learned about the car and the time that um, I published that video, um, some little mistakes I made, and then also we're gonna do a full in-depth tour of the interior screen, all the little customization and stuff you can do on the screens. So by the way, just in case you guys don't know, or if you haven't seen the first video, this is a Big Ben Sasquatch package, uh, Bronco and carbonized gray. All right guys, so one of the first mistakes I made was when I was showing off this box here, I thought that it was locked. But actually what you do is you just push in where the lock is and it opens up. So it actually wasn't locked. And you can see you can put a lot of storage in there. And then another thing I forgot to show you guys is uh, this top because I thought that this top just kind of stays like this, but you can actually lift it up. So if you go to the side, you can see there's a little lever right here. Just pull that one. I need to use both hands, so I'm gonna pull it up. There's one on each side, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's popped up. All right, guys, I just popped it up. That's what it looks like when it's popped up. So like I said, just these two latches here, and then a little prop comes down from here. It's, it's like uh, you'll grab it from the middle, and then you put it down right here, so then you can access the cargo area more easily. All right, guys, now let's go over these two screens right here. And uh, you can see the soft top doesn't have the greatest sound deadening because you can still hear the airplanes out there. And I want to show you what the screens do when you start the car. So you press the button. That one comes on like that. And this one has a cool graphic. It's very high def too. It looks really nice. I'm sure the 12 inch would look even nicer. This is the 8 inch screen by the way. So it just pops up all your stuff. But I want to show you guys this instrument cluster because this is actually really cool and this is standard on all Broncos. So even if you get a bass, you still get this really nice instrument cluster. So it's controlled by these four buttons right here and then this button right here. So I'll show you guys what all these buttons do. So right now I'm going to be scrolling with this button right here. So you can see it pops up your screen on the side. And that first screen we were on was the calm screen because once you select that one, then it makes your... Uh, Make sure your speedometer the whole entire display instead of just part of the display. So let's scroll down here. You can see it has your trip info, has your off-road status, tire pressure, gauges, turbo boost, and then you can configure gauges. So if I click OK right here, you can see these are all the screens that you can add on here. So if you want your average speed displayed, you can click that off-road pitch and roll so basically this is the screen where you pick all the stuff that you want to cycle through instead of um, going through an actual menu so let's get out of this here let's press back again so you can see here's the main menu so we we're just in my view so you have trip fuel off-road navigation phone audio and settings so let's go through all of those so trip fuel let's try that first it shows you all the sub menus so let's just click the first one and scroll down Here's your fuel economy. Here's your trip one, trip two, average speed. This one, obviously the average speed isn't that high because a lot of people have been test driving it and looking at it. And then this is your auto start stop. It tells you if it's on or off, stuff like that. So we'll click back again and we'll get out of this screen. Let's go to off-road stuff. So I'm sure that's what a lot of Bronco people are interested in. So if you go to off-road status, you can see it shows your steering angle there it shows which uh, wheels are getting the power. So for example, if we press four auto here, it shows you that the four wheel drive is shifting and see now it shows that all of them are turning. So that's really cool. Let's put it back in too high here. And we can keep scrolling down. Power distribution, tire pressure, the gauges again, turbo boost, oil temperature, trans temp, and battery voltage. So that's all the kind of mechanical stuff that a lot of Bronco guys would be interested in. And then if you click navigation, if you have something set up in the navigation here, you can have it set up to go to your house, you can have it go to favorites or points of interest. Then here's your phone. You can see it has the phone not paired, but if your phone was hooked up, I believe you can cycle through contacts and stuff like that. Here's your audio. So you can choose if you want to go to a different source. So you can see right now we're on Sirius XM. So if we click FM on here, you can see it went to FM now. All right, next up, let's try out settings. So let's see what kind of settings you can do on the new Bronco. 
So you can change your speedometer to kilometers if you want. You can see it shows kilometers now. Neutral toe. I will have to read up on neutral toe. I actually don't know what that does. Oil life, 100%, of course. So those are just in the settings. But that about does it for this screen. So we'll just leave it on, uh, we'll leave it on calm screen so that it, the speedometer can take up the whole screen. I kind of like when it does that. Uh, next up, let's talk about the drive modes. So I went through this briefly in my review, but I want to show you guys kind of what it does to the screens. So we click Eco here. You can see all the leaves and all that stuff. See, it really changes the way your display looks. Now everything is green, takes up the whole screen. Let's rev it up a little bit. I like how these numbers are, are pretty instant. They're not like glitchy, so that's nice. And this, by the way, is really fun to use. Like, it feels really nice. Let's go to sport mode here. And when you put it in sport mode, it automatically shifts it into four auto. So you can see, and you can, by the way, if you wanted to do sport mode in too high, you just click too high. So it's not like it'll like take you out of sport mode, anything like that. So that's what sport mode looks like. Let's try out slippery here. Looks like slippery keeps it in four auto. So that's like, if it's raining outside, you might want to use that. So slippery doesn't look all that much different than normal. Let's go to mud ruts here. So mud ruts, it looks like it locked the rear differential. It says off-road use only because you don't want to be driving around on pavement with locked differentials. And you can see it shows all the vital information you'd want if you're doing mud and ruts. And it's kind of interesting how no matter what you do, it always kind of shows the speed over there. Let's go to sand here. So it looks like sand puts it in four high and then locks the rear differential as well. So I'm sure it tunes like the throttle response and everything else accordingly. But let's put everything back to normal. So when you put everything back in normal, it goes back in too high. It turns off all the lockers and everything. And everything is, like I said, back to normal. Next up, I want to show you guys the trail assist. So this is actually pretty cool. So let's put in drive here. So you press this button when you're moving here. It says trail control enabled use set button for one pedal drive. So we'll do set. There we go. Look, it's driving itself at one miles an hour now. <laughs> this is crazy. It's like a baby cruise control. Obviously it's for off road use and stuff like that. And none of the differentials are locked, anything like that. So I can turn, but that's pretty cool. Look, it's literally driving itself right now. So I really like that. And then you just step on the brake for it to stop. And if you let go of the brake, it'll resume. And I can turn it off there and then turn it completely off by just pressing the button again. There we go. And the trail turn assist, I don't want to use that because that's for off-road use because you don't want to turn on pavement with the differentials locked. That's about it for the screens on the Broncos. And when I drive it to the front, I want to give you guys some updated impressions because in my original review, I said that it felt kind of sluggish. And I just filled this one up. You can see it has a full tank of gas. I just filled it up with 91 octane and I got on it a little bit on my way back from the gas station and it's not as sluggish as I thought. It's actually pretty decent. And if you're not flooring it all the time and you're just driving normal, it has so much torque that it will never actually feel sluggish at all. And like I mentioned in the video, the throttle response is really good too. So I'll just demonstrate that real quick for you guys when I get out onto the street. All right guys, so my favorite is going into sport mode and then switching it into two wheel drive high because it puts in four auto like I mentioned earlier. So there we go. So that's my favorite mode. So we're gonna turn this corner and uh, just do a little acceleration so I can show you guys that it actually isn't as slow as I originally thought. We'll just do a little one here, we'll be careful. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that is not bad at all. So, it's plenty enough power. And like I mentioned, when you're driving normally, it has so much torque that you won't ever feel like it's actually sluggish. But I hope you guys enjoyed my update, little uh, follow-up video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.